O come, let us worship God and bow low before the God who made us, for He is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My dear sisters and brothers, acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, and what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, Did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the woman, that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like gods, who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made it and made loin clothes for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden, at the breezy time of the day, a man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The word of the Lord. Your response are sound. Your response, blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is he whose fall is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes no, not guilt. In whose spirit there is no guile. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. For this shall every faithful man pray to you in time of distress. Though deep waters overflow, they shall not reach him. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. You are my shelter from distress, you will preserve me. With glad cries of freedom, he will ring me round. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. 
Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had speech impediment, and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him all by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears, and spitting touched his tongue, and looked up to heaven and gone, and said, Epata, that is, be open. And immediately the man's ears were open. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure all of us are very familiar with our first reading today because the story of original sin. And because of this original sin, all of us in one way or another, we are being affected by it. We are inclined to commit sin. And the dialogue between the woman and the serpent which represents the devil, you see the woman entertain that conversation. And I think that's most of the temptation comes. Temptation comes to us very often. Temptations by itself is not a sin. It becomes a sin when we entertain it and act on it. So once we entertain all those temptations, later on we realize that we are being mesmerized by it or we just totally into it. And temptation comes to us as presented the first reading, very beautiful, very nice. As St. Paul reminds us that the devil will come to us like an angel of light. At the very beginning, we are being disguised into a very beautiful and nice situation. But we have always to see what would be the outcome of it, the fruits of it. That's what Jesus reminds us. We can always see by its fruit. And once we sin, that's a way of distancing to our Lord. That's why in today's first reading, when their eyes were open, they realized that they were naked and they tried to distance themselves with God. But what counts in this book of Genesis, if you go a little verse farther in Genesis 3.15, we hear the very first good news when God told the serpent, I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. They will crush your head and yours at the heel. So that's the first, very first good news that God will redeem humanity from their sins. And of course, that refers to the Lord Jesus, who is the promised Messiah, to come to redeem us from our sins. That's why we have always to cling ourselves to the Lord, because the Lord tells us, 
Do not be afraid. I have overcome sin. I have overcome death. Once you cling to me, I will be there for you. You will have the power to overcome the power of evil. So we ask the Lord for this grace. That's why I have always to dedicate time for prayer, to dedicate time before the Blessed Sacrament. So to say nowadays, as I was listening to Bishop Bob Baron on his talk about the real presence, survey tells that 70% of Catholics don't believe anymore in the presence of the Holy Eucharist. No wonder sins are rampant nowadays. We don't have the power to overcome sin. And sad to say, sins could come to us through the tip of our fingers, through our smart cell phone. So that's the reality nowadays. People are distancing themselves from God through committing sin. But God is merciful. The promise is there. And the church has this very great escape, and that is the sacrament of Reconciliation. Next week, we'll begin Lent once again to give us that opportunity to look at ourselves once again deeply and see where we are in terms of our relationship with God. When God confronted Abel and Abe, where are you? God was asking them in terms of their relationship with Him, not physical distance, but the question is, where are you when it comes your relationship with me? So I think that's also a question you have to ask now. Where are we in terms of our relationship with our Lord Jesus? Let us pray. Trusting God's providence, we present our petitions that the ears of Christians everywhere may be opened by God's grace to His saving word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Saving leaders may be guided by the Holy Spirit in their efforts to protect life from conception through natural deaths. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who suffer from addiction may find healing in Jesus' merciful touch. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. The members of this faith committee may grow in faith, love, and hope through God's providence in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That the faithful departed, freed from all sin, may rejoice in the vision of God forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's pray for the intention of Leo Groff, for which this must be offered. We pray to the Lord. Faithful and merciful God, hear the prayers we offer you today to Christ our Lord. So that you, Lord God of all creation, for your good and receive this bread, we offer you fruit of the earth, work in my hands, and become first the bread of life. Let the mistress one and one come first to humble himself to serve with our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your good and receive this wine, we offer you. Through the divine work of my hands, become for us our spiritual drink. The spirit of time was set with sacrifices, they have been to you, Lord God. What was so many critics upon my sins?
For my dear sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours are acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord our God, who once established this great thing is to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks, O Lord our God. Through the right and just our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father, more solely. To your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word to whom made all things, whom you sent as a Savior and Redeemer, he incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people. He stretched out his hands and endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory. As with one voice, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you who comes, name the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, a fawn of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a two fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this soul of your drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, the Lord, and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread to all the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them to light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. May Mary to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, honor, shores forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, May be always 
free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said, Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, with our life to us, receive it. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, keep me safe, try to Amen. Father of Christ, keep me safe, try Amen. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of man, for satisfies the thirsty the soul and the hungry he fills with good things. But Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to seep into my soul. Since I cannot this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself wholly to you. However, permit me to be separate from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in one bread and one chalice, grant us with prayers that to live, that make one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for salvation of the world to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in body. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and humbly pray. Through the Prince of the Heavenly Hearts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the spirits, all about the world. 